Good morning. Good morning. Fifteen years ago, my son was in confirmation at Asbury First. And part of the confirmation program is experiencing some of the outreach ministries of the church. One Saturday, he and his confirmation class had hospitality duty for something called RAIN, Rochester Area Interfaith Hospitality Network, now known as Family Promise of Greater Rochester. He found that experience so meaningful and so fulfilling that the next time it was Asbury first turn as host congregation, he wanted to go back and do it again. Since the confirmation class wasn't doing it, he asked me if I'd go along. I did, and that's something I have been, invo been involved with ever since. It was something my son and I shared for several years, and then as he moved on, it became something I did both alone and in conjunction with other groups of church, such as the men's group. So what is Family Promise of Greater Rochester? Well, their mission statement says to assist families at risk of or experiencing homelessness to achieve sustainable independence by providing person-centered, holistic services in collaboration with the greater community. But the other part of what I'm going to talk about today is experiencing the Holy Spirit. So let me tell you what that means to me. When I was in a counselor with the youth mission trips, we would always ask our family group each evening how they experienced God that day. And to me, that's kind of another way of asking, how did they experience the Holy Spirit? And when I think back about their answers, they were almost exclusively about relationship. They've either talked about how they were inspired by relationship with those they served or relationship with those they served with. And I think that fits with the scripture we heard this morning, because one thing that struck me as I listened to that is how the Holy Spirit experience seems to always be with people when they're in some sort of group or other. And that certainly reflects my experience working with Family Promise. Part of hospitality is giving parents a little bit of respite time from childcare. And a lot of times that would turn into evenings of play with children. We'd play games, we would do crafts, and engaging children for a period like that is certainly somewhere where the Holy Spirit comes through. One time at Christmas, we went out on the front lawn around the tree and sang Christmas carols. Oftentimes, the most difficult part of those evenings was explained to children at the end that no, I wasn't gonna be there the next day to play with them, but I was convinced that somebody else just as good and probably more fun would be there. Now another part of it was engaging in conversation with the parents and older children. Now for me, that was mostly listening, and I found they often wanted to just share experiences about their day, their week, or just their life in general. And from that, I learned how tenuous the security of life that we take for granted truly is, and how little it takes for somebody and a family to be thrust into a situation of homelessness. Now, another aspect for me of experiencing that Holy Spirit is through the relationships with people I served with. I got to meet and got to know people in the congregation that I probably otherwise wouldn't know as more than just a face I saw sometimes on Sunday. It helped me deepen the relationship with people I already knew, particularly, for example, people in the men's group. And then there were the people from the other faith communities who served with us. In particular, I remember the folks from the Baptist Temple who were the leaders in preparing meals on those Tuesdays where the men's group served. That became kind of a regular touchstone and certainly something that brought the spirit into my life. Now, one thing I've learned is that experiencing that spirit doesn't necessarily require direct contact. On one of the mission trips with the youth, we, one of our work projects was for a large food bank in Philadelphia. And the task that my family group was assigned was basically cleaning and clearing out some old factory space that they intended to turn into new warehouse and distribution facilities. At the end of the day, some of the youth were kind of disappointed in that experience. They just didn't feel that connection to people. But then we reflected on some of the things that the leaders of the food bank had shared about how many additional meals they would be able to provide 
and how many additional people they would be able to help through that space that we were helping prepare. And I think everyone began to realize that there was the Holy Spirit just in sowing those seeds that may bear fruit when you're not around to experience it at all. The COVID pandemic has forced Family Promise to make some significant changes in the way they operate. The old model of rotating host congregations and cadres of volunteers coming in to serve the clients was no longer feasible. So they made some changes. They acquired apartments to house the, the guest families, providing actually some greater stability in their life situation. They acquired a new building on Webster Avenue, which not only provided some apartment space, but enabled them to expand the reach of their programs. The nature of the service that we provide as volunteers changed as well. We were buying food to stock refrigerators. We were buying school supplies at the beginning of the school year. People were helping fix up apartments to make them ready for families to move into or cleaning them in between families occupying them. At holiday time, we adopted a family, basically providing gifts that they could exchange so that they could experience the Christmas holiday the way we're all used to experiencing it. So in summary, Family Promise has truly brought the Holy Spirit into my life. And maybe I'll let the engineer and me have a moment because I like the statistics part of it. So let me share something from their website. Currently, 78% of the families in the shelter program exit to stable housing. To me, that's the Holy Spirit at work. Thank you. The view is really different from up here. This is really being on high. <laughs> My name is Carolyn Hamill. I'm a member of Asbury's Outreach Team, and today I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Cameron Community Ministries and sharing the uh, Holy Spirit at Cameron. Cameron is located in the Lyle Otis area. This area is stressed, and its people are in great need. They are in need of support. For 35 years, Cameron has strived to meet these needs. Hot lunches are served daily, an emergency uh, food pantry, and there's a clothing store that uh, serves the community members that are in need of clothing and housewares. An active after-school program with uh, mainly school 54 students has been highly successful. But, the program that I have been mostly involved in is the Teen Center. <clears throat> this center uh, gives experiences to the teens in that area that would otherwise not be shared. They are uh, art projects, literary projects, food preparations, field trips to college campuses, active uh, academic tutoring, which was especially important uh, during this last two years during the pandemic when the city schools were virtually closed down for several months. Uh, we also uh, try and hold courses on etiquette and financial. The, these uh, kids have very little opportunity to know how to establish a a uh, checking account or a savings account, and we try and take them through the steps to do that. <clears throat> and of course, there are times when we have a lot of fun and some great conversation, and the conversation is always very stimulating to people like me. The center uh, also gives me precious memories, and one memory that will be with me for a very long time is our first Thanksgiving uh, dinner in our new center. <clears throat> we had asked the teens to invite a friend from the neighborhood, and also the teens were to help us prepare the dinner. They were in charge of planning the menu. Now, we did have the Thanksgiving turkey, but the sides were a little bit different. The other thing that was uh, a little bit difficult was our dinner guest was very fluid. You, you didn't know quite how that was going to be planned out. Well, finally, the big day arrived. <clears throat> the teens were excited and loud. 
and the volunteers and staff were nervous and a bit bossy. But the kitchen was crowded with more than enough help, so I asked three girls to come with me and we would do the decorations and set the tables. Well, they were definitely curious about me. Here I am. I'm white, I'm older, and I'm, as they say, definitely from the birds. <laughs> but uh, they asked me, why are you here? <clears throat> I quietly said, I'm here to help with dinner. Well, it didn't take a school psychologist to figure out with the look on their face that they were very doubtful that that was my real reason. <clears throat> Finally, I said, each one of us had a different idea on how to decorate and how to set the table. So I finally said, okay, you two decorate. Chandel, you come with me and we will set the table. Actually, Chandel had better spacing, safe spacing ideas about setting the table than I did. Now, we had to make a couple of trips to Walnut, which were kind of because we needed extra place settings and we also needed some extra uh, decorations. I sure learned a lot in those few hours. Finally it got done and we thought it looked absolutely swell. When we were done, the girls turned to me and said, will you sit with us? Well, then I knew why I was there. The Holy Spirit, no way if I would have gotten that invitation from those girls if the Holy Spirit had not been working with us. Recently, one afternoon, my daughter Susan and I were dropping off some snacks, bottled water, and calf, craft supplies at uh, camera. They're always in need of, of extra snacks. <clears throat> While I was getting the supplies to the uh, proper places and people, Susan was in the driveway in the car, and the driveway is right alongside the uh, playground. The playground uh, is fenced in and it has very little access to the neighborhood. When I got back to the car, Susan says, Mom, you must see this. This is amazing. About a dozen boys and eight girls in a wide range of ages were being supervised by one young adult male. In the midst of this troubled neighborhood, where shooting had just happened a few days ago, where there are drug dealers littering the street with their paraphernalia. A paradise of children playing together quietly and being peacefully supervised. No bullying, no tears, no crying, no fights. The girls shared two dolls and two balls the boys were playing a pickup basketball game and seemed to understand their own rules. <clears throat> Susan and I sat in the car and watched this inspiring action for about 10 to 15 minutes. We looked at each other and knew that we were seeing the work of the Holy Spirit at Cameron. Now, on this Pentecostal Sunday, <clears throat> I want to thank you, the people of Asbury First, for supporting the work of the Holy Spirit at Cameron. Thank you. Good morning once again. I'm here representing the storehouse, and I will not spend much time telling you about it, as you know, we provide clothing and household items at no charge to those in need in our community. Rather, this morning, I'm going to share you a storehouse story. One day, several years ago, a young teenage girl presented herself at the storehouse in need of clothing, not just for herself, but for her infant daughter as well. I helped her find the things she needed, clothes and household items. And as we were packing her things, she said, do you have any food 
My baby and I don't have anything to eat. I explained that we don't have food at the storehouse. But then I said, let me check. There may be a way to get you a few things. Thinking that perhaps I could get some food from the grocery bag ministry, I climbed the stairs to the church office. When I opened the door, there on the floor next to the receptionist's desk was a bag of groceries filled with many essentials, cereal, soup, peanut butter, spaghetti noodles, and sauce, just to name a few. I inquired about giving it to our teenager and was told, absolutely. A person witnessing the exchange regarding the groceries reached out and handed me $10 for our teenager to buy milk and bread. Returning to the storehouse, we now had clothing, household items, and groceries. Now I asked her, do you have transportation? Her answer was no. It would have been nearly impossible for her to take public transportation and certainly impossible to manage walking. The storehouse has a policy that we are not to transport shoppers in our personal cars. I broke the rule and took her home. On the way, she shared her story, her hopes, and her dreams. As I left her apartment, a place no one should after, ever have to call home, the tears began to stream down my face. It was then that I realized what had happened that afternoon, and I share that realization with you. The Holy Spirit dwelled in the arms of the one who carried the bag of the groceries and left it at the church. The Holy Spirit dwelled in the hands of the one who provided bread and milk money. And I believe the Holy Spirit also dwelled with the two of us, giving her the courage to share with me, trusting me, and allowing me the privilege of listening. I can assure you that my story is not the only one where the Holy Spirit has been present at the storehouse, for I have witnessed other similar encounters. A volunteer sitting on the floor sharing a storybook with a young child while her mother shopped. A volunteer listening to a shopper's tragic story and embracing the shopper with a reassuring hug, tears flowing between them even volunteer to volunteer, sharing tender moments. The Holy Spirit moves among all of us. The Holy Spirit dwells within each of us. Thanks be to God.